YouTubers, hello, hello. It's Melissa, the M of the M and H of the Spoke Hairstyles. I hope you're well. This recording has been inspired by um, seeing um, pictures of Naomi Campbell's um, hair situation being posted everywhere. Um, and um, I just felt the need to record it. I feel a bit sad. Um, and the reason why I feel a bit sad is that when I first came across the pictures, I came across it on through, um, you know, black people's um, groups and black people posting it and um, being quite critical and quite harsh or um, just uh, so far, I've not seen much kind of love and support for her. Um, when I started Bespoke Hairstyles, the aim was to support sisters who chose to have the kink in their hair and the curl in their hair, um, to just support them and give them nice hairstyles where their not, head's not being pulled, where their follicles aren't being disturbed, and they can literally have a couple of weeks, hands away from their head, rocking a nice style, um, and just got on with the more important issues, more important things, um, if that makes sense. And so the service we provide, Get and I provide, is for that. It's for people who eventually, they don't want to perm their hair, um, they don't want to weave their hair anymore, and they just want to have their own natural curl in their hair, and just for us to look after them and, and support them in their hair journey. But for me, it's, it's, it's not that important. Like hair, it's important, but there are much, much more important um, things out there that we need to worry about. Um, and it's kind of like, take care of your hair, so your hair's all done, and then you can worry about the, the important things, i.e. my hair's done, now I can hold my baby. My hair's done, I can um, look after somebody else's hair. Um, it's not that important. And I feel like when I first came onto the scene, the natural hair scene, um, that there was a language going on with groups that I, even though I've been natural for over like 10 years, I didn't understand the language. I was like, but when, when I chose to become natural, it was just me with my own, just leaving my hair alone and letting it grow naturally. And now there's BC, ACV, um, and a FC, and um, 4B, and for they're just so, everything just sounded much more complicated than it needed to. And so I've, I've tried to catch up and learn the lingo and the language. But in, in the simplest, uh, uh, um, in the simplest language, I mean, Egeta and I just kind of twist hair and interlock hair and style hair and then off you go. It doesn't mean I qualify to judge anyone. It doesn't. Because I don't know your hair situation. We choose not to blow dry just because our research has shown, um, and it's until recent, like last year, that those um, are some of the um, things that we do to our hair that causes hair loss. Remember, we've come from a hair loss background. I've seen and I'm experiencing what it goes to on a day-to-day -day basis with her hair loss, which is major hair loss. And as a result, we have created this and um, supports styling service um, for clients so that their hair is not being pulled. But it does not qualify me to judge a sister who has permed hair, to judge another sister who has, um, who continually blow dries her hair, or another sister who has weave, or another sister who has weaved all throughout their adult life and they just don't know what else to do with their hair. Naomi Campbell is a, was a, a leader, a pioneer, um, a, a role model. And, and is still, she was one of the first supermodels. Um, she was on Vogue magazine. I mean, I don't know much about Naomi Campbell, right? But I know she led the way. She paved the path for so many young, um, black or mixed race, um, um, young people who wanted to do something like what she was doing. 
We don't know what it's been like for Naomi Campbell. How many times a stylist has had to um, take off a weave, put another weave on for another uh, a, a photographic or a modeling session. Naomi Campbell had to fight. Remember, she is, has a black skin. So not only has she had to kind of um, break barriers and fight to be on par with her, um, with her white colleagues, she did not have the strength to say, right, okay, I want to go around with my, um, I want to learn about my Afro hair. She did not. She had to do what she needed to do to get where she needed to get. And that's why we know her name. We might not have known, necessarily known her name if she had had to wear her African hair. We don't know her situation. So I'm just saying, I don't judge. All I know is I see what she has done. And what, for me, what she has done is she has paved the way for other um, young people who then might then now decide, okay, I'm black and I'm going to try and do it. I'm going to try and do it now with my Afro hair. It does not mean now that Naomi is going through something so, so hard and in a vulnerable, she was in a vulnerable situation. She's just come out of the pool and she's having a private um, kind of chill out, down out time and now it's everywhere. And the worst thing is, I mean, a client told me today that that photograph she'd seen from the Metro, but I haven't seen it from the Metro. I have seen it from other black sisters posting it and being really harsh about her hair situation. You do not know what it's like for that woman who her whole appearance is based on um, the beauty industry. You don't know what it's like for, for it to be everywhere. And now for us, black people being the ones out there just spreading it. I saw the same thing happen with Serena Williams. And I just think that just because we're part of a, a natural group, which I, I, I have even issues with that. I don't think we need to be a part of a natural group. I think we're all the same. We just happen to rock different hairstyles. As I've always said, when I weave, I was me. When I permed, I was me. When I blow dried, I was me. And I've got locks, I'm still me. So it doesn't define who I am. It just helps give me something different to do to my hair. And I enjoy it. But it does not. it's not the be all and end all. And I feel like we have to be careful with the grooves. Be careful. We are po we, when you, um, there, there's been a cost to Naomi Campbell being this, um, she has paved the way, right? And the cost has been her hair loss. But we should hold her and we should support her and we should protect her because she needed to do that for the next generation. Now she's done her bit. But what we do as part of the group, we go and post pictures of her in a vulnerable situation, judging and being harsh. And I don't get it. How can we be an open group if we make comments like that? How can a sister who has weave hair, who's thinking, oh my God, I'm suffering from traction. I want to go to a group and talk to them about my situation. And they see Naomi Campbell's picture. Why would they think they will be welcome in that group? Why would they think there will be a no judgment? Be very careful. Just because at an early stage, you have chosen to leave your chemical um, situation and to be natural does not qualify you to look at somebody else's situation and make passing judgment. If you have judgment and it's negative, keep it to yourself. But sisters, be careful because we, when we start posting negative images and judging our sisters who are pioneers and who are successful and are paving the way, and there's always a cost to that, um, and it's not an all or nothing situation. This is not a good thing for us. So I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Um, when you are a part of what Melissa Niget does and doing, it's, it's not about judging. It's about supporting. And even if you, ha if I, if I had an issue or negative uh, situation that I'm feeling about how people handle their hair, it will not be on a public forum because as quickly as you're posting and a sister's, um, a picture, um, you feel you qualify um, to send out a picture of somebody who's in a vulnerable situation. That could be you. You don't know. Uh, that could be your sister. That could be your family. So we have to stop this. We have to hold each other and support each other. Sisters out there who are wearing a weave, who are thinking, I, my hair, I'm losing my hair. I don't know what to do. Get in touch. Let us talk about your options. Let us see how we can help you so that it's not too late. Um, for you and whatever whatever follicles with it whatever we whatever we can save 
we'll, we'll try to save. And I think that's the message. The message is be careful of how your hair is being pulled. Be careful of who touches your hair. But we understand it's not all the time that you can control that. In Annie Campbell's situation, she probably couldn't because she was put in a situation where somebody else was on her hair, then another slice, another slice. She couldn't control that. She was already known as a stroppy cow and a moody cow and things like that. So we don't know. We don't know your history. We don't know your past. But the moment you come into our space and you get in touch with us and get in myself, no judgment. It's about pure love because for us, whether you weave, whether you perm, whether you blow dry, whether you're natural, whether you're locks, whatever, you're a sister. And we should be like, we should be like supporting each other. And that's what we'll do. Where we know we can't help you, we'll say we can't help you. But I just say like, it needs to stop. Stop posting pictures of sisters who are in vulnerable position and um, judging them. Just because you have your full head of hair does not qualify. And you've chosen to be natural now does not qualify you to judge anyone because you don't know their situation. I think this is called a rant. <sighs> Please share. And um, yeah, it's just about us being one community. One community. Thanks for watching this posting and take care of you. Peace, love, and like unity. That's what we want. Take care of you, YouTubers. Bye. Ah, well done.